Andy. Yes, a more late drama involving Chelsea yesterday. Yeah. And I hope the Sheffield United fans didn't leave at 2-1. I'd never do anything like that. <laughs> oh, that's no. That's not the kind of thing you'd ever, <laughs> you'd ever do. One, if they did, if you are a Blades <laughs> fan who said, I can't be doing with this at the end, I'm off. Did yeah. you do an Andy Jacobs? Do do let us know. Talksport.com, text to 8 to 89. Tweet TSH and JR 03717 if you want to join us in person. We'll go into the game more in detail, but honestly, the, the idea of bringing on Battershield to shore it up, to stop. The only way Sheffield United were going to score was to lump it into the box at yeah, that stage. Wow. And he comes That's the on. way they score. Honestly, he's got the vertical leap of an upright piano, that bloke. <laughs> really. Yeah. Honestly, he missed two headers and they scored. Oh, yeah. What was the point of bringing him on? I don't oh, know, to shore things up. Sake. Hopeless, really. But, you know, what are you going to do? Yeah. Um, you have been the incredible sighing man. Andy's been sitting oh, next to me so preparing for the show and occasionally just goes... <sighs> well, cause and I don't so, have to ask him what it is. It's so frustrating. I mean, you just can't. <laughs> words can't describe how annoying it's been watching Chelsea this season. Wow. It, they've squandered. They've taken two points mm. from the bottom two teams, having led four times yeah. in the games. They'd be the level with West Ham with like, a game in hand. It's absolutely stupid what they've done in the Them's last the week. the margins. Yeah, but it's just it's so frustrating. Mm. Anyway, I, I did watch a bit of the old firm game. Oh, I yeah, see it's a tremendous that, uh, match. It was good to see Gordon Ramsay in the crowd. Uh, and apparently, he, he, he said to them that you've got to repaint the dressing room and shorten the menu in the canteen. That's it. And then that, that, that's what, that was, uh, of course, the cornerstone <laughs> in many of his shows, <laughs> wasn't it? Yeah. But what's an absolute cracker. Susie McCabe's yeah. going to join us later on. It... The trouble is, atmosphere-wise, it's a bit like a, a Real Barca game. Like, one team scores, the away team score, and there's this deathly silence, yeah, yeah. isn't there? It wasn't a great stand. It was also, a good game, but it's not, you know, the, the, those teams, uh, they were saying on breakfast this morning, you know, championship teams, really. I mean, Rangers did ever so well to come back into that game they because did. at half-time yeah. they looked dead and buried. And the fact you've only got one set of fans in the ground really does amplify the fact when that set of supporters are not happy. No. And they gave them a proper send-off at half-time to tell them they weren't happy. But it, it seemed to have the desired effect because yeah, they, they were a different out. side second half. So, uh, but now, what a cracking game that yeah, was. I do feel for Wolves. Though. They must have more apologies than Howard Webb. <laughs> I know. It's... I mean, I'm surprised they even take his calls. <laughs> Yes, I, I, I agree with um, Gary O'Neill. I think that's one of the worst decisions in the history of football. Yeah. Right? I mean, what on earth was the VAR thinking? What was he thinking? Yes. Can he not tell? Has he never played football? Did he honestly think that Fabianski would have got to that header? He yeah. wouldn't have got to that header if no one had been standing in front of him. If everybody else had left the pitch, he still wouldn't have got to that header. No. It's a pathetic I think, decision. I think, really, if you looked hard enough for long enough, you'd probably find a reason to chalk off every goal if you really, oh, no. really tried. It was There'd VAR be something in the and it's up. very, very worst. Yeah. Really abysmal. Interfering. No, it was yeah, very hard to uh, to see it any other way. But Danny's going to be joining us uh, very shortly for a, a bit of a chat, reflecting on the Premier League weekend. Um, wind assisted. Uh, wind was in the news mm. this week. I don't know if you noticed, we had Storm Kathleen and uh, Adonis Iriola, the Bournemouth manager, blamed Wind for uh, the collapse at Kenilworth Road. Mm. Not the fighting spirit of Luton, you understand, but the wind. The wind was key. It was in our favour in the first half. We had chances. Um, in the second half, we couldn't play like that because of the wind. It was very good for us in the first half. Very bad in the second half. <laughs> and um, Storm Kathleen got a mention yeah, match from of the day, didn't it? James Ward-Prowse for yeah. uh, the assist. <laughs> yes. He said he'd never scored. Of all, you know, I would have thought uh, over the years, James Walbrand would have scored direct from a corner, mm. even a, as a kid, because he hit such a good set piece. But he never had. That was his first one, straight in the net. So a bit of wind-assisted sport. If you've got any tales, I mean, you maybe paint pictures with words. Take us back there, good and bad. Maybe if you were a keeper, beaten completely by the wind, or somebody who scored an absolute weldy because of it. Let's have some wind-assisted uh, sports tales. Um, Talksport.com, text 1889, tweet TSH&J, 03717223344. Paul Hawksby and Andy Jacobs, Monday to Friday afternoons, 1 till 4, on AM, on DAB, via the Talksport app, and on your smart speaker. Talksport.